The light and peace of Christ be with you all. Welcome to the kitchen of our home on Easter Day, where we will celebrate together the story of God's saving work in the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. I am joined virtually by Bishop Rose Hudson Wilkin, who will read from the Bible and will share something of what the churches of the Diocese of Canterbury are doing to enable prayer and worship while we're unable to gather together in our church buildings. We're also joined by Theo, aged 10, who is a member of a parish church in the Diocese of Canterbury, who will lead us in prayers. In common with the rest of the clergy and people of the Church of England, we're each at home, where we've recorded our own parts of the service. The music we're using has been pre-recorded and was recorded long before this emergency began. At this very difficult time in the life of the nation and of the world, our prayers today are especially with those who are suffering, with those who care for them, and for all who mourn. God's Son, Jesus Christ, experienced the fullness of human suffering and yet has made all things new. Let us together light the candle which represents the risen Christ, the one who said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all times belong to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God. As we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident even at this time, when the future feels ever-changing and uncertain, that we shall share God's victory even over death and live with him forever. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. This is the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia!
God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Churches up and down the country are responding to this challenging time in a huge number of innovative ways. Bishop Rose, the Bishop of Dover in the Diocese of Canterbury, is going to share something of how churches are stepping up to the present challenges. We know that not all superheroes wears a cape. In these days, we are becoming more and more grateful for the incredible work of our key workers. Shuna Body is a self-supporting minister whose day work with Kent Fire and Rescue is more crucial now than ever before. Social distancing is something which we on Wommy Marsh are masters at with such a scattered population. A church with no electricity, a congregation barely on the, on the internet meant for us live streaming was pointless. With so many streets and villages in self-isolation, I felt the call to respond practically with food, medicine and care. And this, I guess, was where my second life merges with my call as a non-stipendary minister. In my day job, I work for Kent Fire and Rescue Service within a multi-agency team. So partnership working is second nature to me. I'm also chair of CALM, a local charity which specialises in supporting isolated elderly people. After a meeting of parish, district and county representatives, I joined forces with the Wormley Marsh Daycare Centre and New Omni Town Council with the creation of the Wormley Marsh Community Support Hub. This is a place where people can phone and order deliveries of hot meals, shopping and prescriptions, where they can get advice or engage with telephone befriending. We also promote the delivery services of our amazing local businesses, the butchers, the bakers, the fishmongers, the greengrocers, which actually also helps them keep afloat in challenging times. It's the best example of partnership working I've ever been privileged to be part of. Today, on Easter Day, I'll be joining my colleagues from Kent Fire and Rescue in their daily support of Age UK, delivering meals to the most vulnerable in our communities. Playing my part in answering Christ's call to feed the hungry and care for the sick is my humble way of serving Christ this Easter. The coronavirus lockdown has hit our community hard. Uh, St Paul's Church in Cliftonville sits in one of the most deprived areas in England, but we're not giving up hope and we're continuing to find ways to be God's church during these challenging times. Firstly, I've been grappling with the mystery of online streaming. After a few dodgy full starts, we've managed to get to grips with the technology and have been streaming a variety of services with surprising results. One of the huge blessings of this is that we've been able to welcome online members of our own congregation who are housebound and who would normally be excluded from joining with the community in worship, as well as the rest of us who are in lockdown. St Paul's is also the distribution point for Thanet Foodlink, our local independent food bank. Because so many are in need, we're now giving away double the amount of food parcels that we normally distribute. This amazing achievement is made possible by our dedicated, hard-working volunteers and the generosity of so many individuals and local businesses. Finally, St Paul's spearheads the Ignite project, which has planted eight new alternative worshipping communities in some of our diocese's most deprived areas. It's a challenging time because we concentrate so much on face-to-face -face relationship building, but our Ignite workers are rising to the challenge. We've had online team meetings, quizzes, worship, and even homemade fitness videos. And of course, we've Skyped, phoned, texted, and Facebook like there's no tomorrow. 
All in all, we may be physically distant, but we have definitely grown relationally, numerically and spiritually because we have been forced to think outside the box. Happy Easter. This joyful Easter time, away we sing and soar. My love, the crucified, has grown to life this morning. At Christ that once was slain, never sees me. We will hear Bishop Rose again later when she reads from the Gospel of John. Caroline, my wife, will now read from the Bible. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary? She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, as we think about the account of the resurrection, stir our hearts by your Spirit that we may renew our hope, strengthen our imagination, and build our ambition to live with you in new life. Amen. In 1944, a British soldier during the Normandy campaign was asked by a friend what he was going to do after the war. He'd been an architect in peacetime and his answer was, I'm going to build a cathedral. His name was Basil Spence and his friend must have thought he was mad because only one new cathedral had been completed between the building of St Paul's in London in the late 17th century and that time. In 1950, Spence, fired with imagination and hope and inspiration and ambition, won the competition to design Coventry Cathedral, one of the greatest of the post-war symbols of peace and reconciliation. 
It was completed in 1962. Imagination, ambition, hope are some of the foods that nourish us in dark times. They can be mere escapism or they can give us a settled direction and intention. That sense of a new direction and intention, of hope that carries us forward, is likely to be mocked by many. Cynicism tells us that all will go on as before. Despair tells us that the road is coming to an end. Fear tells us to look after ourselves. Imaginative hope gives us a level-headed courage and a grand ambition when it is based on what we know to be true. Neither the women nor the two disciples had hope when they went to the tomb. Mary was so filled with sorrow, so caught by an utterly reasonable despair that she could not even recognise Jesus when he stood in front of her. Who would recognise someone known to be dead? Yet within a very short period, we find Mary announcing that she has seen the Lord. Not long after, Peter is telling Cornelius that Jesus had risen and that this was the foundation of hope for all people. There are three astonishing things in what Peter says. First, that someone would rise from the dead. Peter's change from frightened denier of Christ to, po to bold advocate is one of the great evidences for the resurrection. Second, that God would reach in love to the whole world. Third, that Roman occupier and Jewish occupied could be drawn together in unity. To this day, the resurrection of Jesus is the solid foundation of all hope for a better world. The first Christians found that God had made new life possible and offered it to us in Christ Jesus. The first Christians were empowered with the resources to live in ways that brought abundant life to rich and poor, strong and weak, the privileged and the rejected. An amazing community grew and loved and served in time of peace of, and war, of health and of great pandemics. This is the same community, the global church, that still lives and grows all over the world. The resurrection changes us not just individually, but is the fuel for hope-filled ambition and imagination that turns dreams into reality. Hope, faith and love are the key Christian distinctives. Which brings us to today, to Easter 2020. Who does not feel the shock of the last few weeks? So many have suffered from the virus, been in hospital, or mourn someone who is gone. We were all probably shocked as the Prime Minister went into intensive care. And we wish him and all those who are ill well, and we pray for them and their families. So many people right across the country are anxious about employment, anxious about food, isolated from loved ones and feel that the future looks dark. People right across the globe feel the same uncertainty, fear, despair and isolation. We are not alone. The women went to the tomb in the dark and there they found the light and hope of Christ risen from the dead. Mary Magdalene turned the disciples' world back to light. That woman who, as a previous Archbishop of Canterbury, Lancelot Andrews said, was last at the cross, first at the tomb. In the weeks and months that followed, they had a new vision of justice. They shared their goods. They cared for each other so powerfully that over time the world changed 
and changes to this very day. This was a vision of the kingdom of God come on earth, where death would not be the end. Which brings us back to ambitious imagination and what we might call unreasonable hope in this time of darkness. Because in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a hope that is surer than stone, than any architecture. Even in the dark days of this Easter, we can feed, feast on hope. We can dream of what our country and our world will look like after the pandemic. There will still be wickedness and war, poverty and persecution, greed and grasping. There always has been, always will be. Yet in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God lights a fire which calls us to justice, to live in humble generosity, to transform our societies. After so much suffering, so much heroism from key workers and the NHS in this country and their equivalents all across the globe, once this epidemic is conquered here and elsewhere, we cannot be content to go back to what was before as if all was normal. There needs to be a resurrection of our common life, a new normal, something that links to the old but is different and more beautiful. We must dream it, build it, make it, grasp it, because it is the gift of God and the call of God, then we must create it in partnership with God and with one another in the new life of the resurrection of Jesus. We dare to have faith in life before death. We hope because of the resurrection. Amen.
year at Easter, many Christians affirmed the faith expressed at baptism. I invite all of you to join with us if you're able. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord our God, be with us today as we pray together in an unusual way. Dear Almighty Father, we pray for your church and for all congregations around the world while praising you this Easter day with songs of worship and whispers alike. We praise your name and we thank you that you've raised Jesus from the dead, the best gift we could be given. We thank you for our Archbishop Justin Welby and the bishops and for our vicars and church wardens who help us in our journey as a as Christians, help them to make the right decision so we always do as you want. May our leaders of the world do what you want them to do. Thank you for the Queen and all she does and help her to understand what God wants her to do. May you help us all through the Holy Spirit. Lord our God, our Almighty Father, thank you for bringing us together in each of our communities. Thank you for making each of us different, for showing us how to get along. Help us to be with our neighbours, who aren't just the people who live next door, but the entire world. Shine on us as we praise your name of names. Lord, you helped us through the darkness, but some are still sick and frightened. In your kingdom, death and coronavirus doesn't exist. But we still have problems in our world. Be with everyone who is sick. Support and protect everyone who is working to care for them. Help everyone who is anxious to have hope in you. Help your kingdom to come when death and fear will be no more. Please look after every person and animal from small to big. Oh God, we were blind and now we can see. We were sick and now then we were well. Remind us this special day and every day of the great things that you have done for us through your Son, Jesus. Shine on us forever as we listen to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we gather, I invite you now to join with me in the confession and acknowledgement of our sins and our commitment to turn from them. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins. Open your eyes to God's truth. Strengthen you to do God's will and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! 
The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth? holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all Lord of life, with unbounded joy we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we join together in the prayer Christ himself gave us, each in our own preferred language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live in him, in the joys of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the tomb has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and with you and all those whom you love and care for, now and always. Amen. We are raised to new life in Christ. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.